actually I'll, I'll say it right now and I'll put it at the beginning of the video. This is a re a long replay analysis. So as I'm pointing out stuff so that you don't have to go back and watch it again. I mean, you can, if you want to, it's fine with me. It's a second view. Thank you very much. But just pointing it out ahead of time, take notes, write down the stuff that I'm saying. So you don't have to go and scrub back through uh, an hour long video and pick up all those tips that I gave you. Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel for another replay analysis here today. Today, we're analyzing our boy Censored, who is champ one and is actually playing 3v3, which I love. I haven't, I don't do, I don't get to do many 3v3 replay analysis. A lot of them that are submitted are 2v2 games, but he's playing 3v3. He's with a full team of players and he says they're actually, this was, uh, he submitted this about three months ago. Now it's taken me a long time to get to this analysis because I get a lot of submissions and I also make other videos that aren't just replay analysis. You guys know this, but yeah, at the time he said that they were making a team and I think he said trying to reach grand champion by next year. So this is going to be a really good analysis to do and I can't wait to get into it. Before we do, like always guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for more educational Rocket League content because that's what we do on this channel. Everything is about making you a better player. Leave a like on the video, helps me get recommended to more people and enjoy the video. Let's get into it. <clears throat> Okay, let me go back. You guys are a full team, so this is going to be relevant for all of you. Uh, or this mistake that isn't your mistake is relevant to point out because you are a full team and you're trying to improve together. In 3v3, unless communicated, unless this is a specific strategy that you're trying to do on kickoff, you should almost always send one person up to cheat with the person doing the kickoff. In this instance, with one player here, on the kickoff one player across and one player in the back you want the left side to go for kickoff unless again you decide you want the right player to go that's okay either player can go but it's standard that the left side goes and then this player back in the the middle back here w bore should cheat up the middle not too close not too far somewhere right in the middle as they cheat up again uh, that's a little bit depending on if you guys are communicating a kickoff strategy maybe evade is communicating specifically that he's going to try and kill the ball in the middle in which case w board want to cheat up closer in order to get to the ball first after that happens but if you're just doing a standard kickoff you're going to see what happens whatever happens happens w board would want to cheat up and stay not too close not too far somewhere in the middle so that they can react to almost anything that happens on the kickoff and then with that said after you grab this corner boost yourself this now is a mistake i'm putting out for you ideally again you would have had w Bohr pushed up in the midfield and then both players here would be up in mid up in the middle of the field and your mistake here is that you're grabbing this boost and immediately turning up offensively assuming the kickoff is going to go well for you but you never know and because there is always the chance that especially because your teammate didn't cheat up this ball is a dead ball kickoff and Jack could possibly have an open net shot. When you grab this corner boost, you want to turn defensively towards your net so that you're giving yourself the ability to save a immediate shot on net. If you turn up this way, as you do, if there's a dead ball kickoff and then a free shot on net, 99% of the time you cannot make it back taking this path. You cannot make it back in time to save the shot. But if you turn defensively, as I highlighted here, you can almost always get back in time to save the shot. And if you don't need to do that and you notice the kickoff does go well for you, well, then you turn up field and you don't really lose too much time doing so. Yes, there are some instances where this ball might roll up the wall this way. And by taking this path, sometimes you cannot get to the ball in time before the next uh, opponent. But... Uh, a lot of the time you still can you still if you turn defensively can still get there to challenge but you would much rather not be able to get to a ball in time that's up here than just let in a free shot on your net right you would much rather give yourself an opportunity to not get scored on than to just let the goal happen good 50 50 there i really like that not the best aerial for the ball here. You gotta make sure when you're jumping off the wall that you're not jumping off the curved part of the wall, right? 
if you're jumping off of this curved part of the wall, your your the mechanic of the jump completely changes. I'm sure you know what I'm saying. I'm sure most people who play Rocket League know what I'm saying. I can't really, I don't really know a perfect way to describe what I'm talking about, but let me uh, switch perspectives here because that's messing me up. If you jump off of this curved portion of the wall, you do not jump straight off of the wall. You jump sort of angled off of the wall like so. So keep it, you know, keep that in mind. If you would have jumped off of the flat part of the wall here, you could have got to this ball, but you just didn't seem to realize that you were still going to have that effect of jumping off of the curved part of the wall. So just a little bit of a mistake from you. Nice pop around one. Good try. Yeah, good try. Okay. Personally, what I was about to say was I would have rotated to the back post here. I'm going to take a look at this from your teammates perspective and you guys are in comms. So you might have been communicating your boost amounts, be boost totals. But personally, seeing this play, noticing where everyone's at on the field. If I pause right before you lose sight of your teammate on the left hand side of the field. Bam, you could still somewhat see his, his name played over there. But seeing that this ball is going in this direction. Evade is going to have the next touch. By rotating in this direction, you're rotating into the play. And as you rotate back to defense, you generally want to rotate to the back post, right? So personally, I would be expecting our teammate over here to be doing his best job to get back as fast as possible while also collecting as much boost as possible. And because of that, I personally would have rotated around this direction and I've actually let this guy rotate in before me because I believe by you rotating into the if you were to rotate back post like I think you should in this play but you make the assumption okay I'm getting back first I'm a little faster than my teammate over here so I'm gonna take the second man roll but that forces you to rotate into the middle of the net and rotating into the middle of the net is never good because you're facing backwards. You're facing into the net. You can't defend anything from that position and you're not rotating to either post facing the opposite post, which if you know about good defensive positioning by sitting at one post and facing the opposite post, you're covering everything. And again, if we're rotating to the back post, sitting at one post facing the opposite post, you're able to cover the entire net on defense. So if you rotate in front of your teammate based on the premise that you're getting back first, what that's gonna look like is it's gonna be putting you into the middle of the net, in which case you're pretty much useless. So instead, I would have made the decision, let your teammate rotate in first, and you rotate in behind him. That's personally how I would have just laid this out, and I think it's the better play here. Can we play this through? Let's take a look at your teammate's positioning. He is rotating back, perhaps could be doing a better job picking up pads. Not sure what his boost total is right here, but this is your analysis, not a full team analysis. So I'm not going to go that in depth and look at his boost total because, I mean, look at all these pads that he passed on his way back. If he comes all the way back to net and needs you to go for him because he doesn't have boost, that's not your fault. That's his fault. And that doesn't make this the right play. So you've now rotated into the play. And yes, you can you can chase this ball this direction. But more uh, effective, in my opinion, in my professional, not professional, but in my experienced opinion, is you want to rotate away from the ball 99.9% .9 of the time your teammate should have picked up more pads he'd be in a fine position to go up and challenge this and you'd be behind him to follow up whatever happens afterwards if he goes up and challenges this and sunday gets it past him well either sunday has to do what he does and hard clear it 
past the net, in which case it's not dangerous to begin with. Or maybe he bounces it off of this post or just infield passes it, in which case, yes, again, W Boar is beat, but then you're right behind him to go for that ball. So I hope you see how that rotation would have worked out. What you did, what your, your guys' play ended up being was fine as well. But I'm telling you more often than not, rotating away from the ball and challenging the ball head on. You know, if the ball's in your corner over here, challenging it from this direction versus this direction is usually the better play. My mistake. I accidentally pressed a couple wrong buttons there. Let me back it up. All right. One more time. Let's go back. So again, if you would have rotated around the right way, W Boar would be up for this ball. You'd be at the back post. And then you could have either immediately gone up for that ball or realized there was no threat. So just you would be turning for this ball. W Boar would be staying in net or he would have already gone up for this and been out of the play anyways. And then instead of having both of you guys in this corner because the rotation was slightly unoptimal because again like i said you should be rotating away from the ball and i hope you see how if you rotate it around the correct way this situation where now you and w Boar are both in the corner and you're not sure whose ball this is this entire situation would have been avoided with that that perfect rotation all right really fortunate you didn't get scored on this was your ball all day this was your ball to go for right you're the one who's in position to be able to go for this and this is on target almost or very close and jack is in a position to put this down into the net if it's not you should have been turning and going up for this ball 100 percent. this is your ball to go for all day you got enough boost bam right here you turn off your ball cam but you should have gone up for this ball as soon as you see it coming towards the net here again you're able to see both your teammates in front of you wbo whatever his name is uh w boar off to your right i don't know if you didn't see that he was up there if you didn't see that he was up there you might not remember this replay now this was a while ago but you should have seen him there you need to be able to view your entire screen all at once and then bam you don't turn off your ball cam here you realize oh this is my ball and you just jump up and meet the ball up here and clear it to the corner Let's see this. So you get fortunate. I think Jack. No, it might have been in. Not sure. But again, just not going up for that ball and clearing it then puts you in an awkward position. Your champ one and your car control so far has looked really good for champ one. So I will commend you on that. Um, but at these lower ranks, I mean, at higher ranks, the difference between like a a champ three to GC or a GC to SSL is just small mistakes and small mistakes lead to other mistakes. Mistakes, one mistake leads to another mistake leads to a goal. So this is one of those instances so far, pretty much everything I pointed out has been just mistakes that could lead to other mistakes that lead to you missing an opportunity on offense or leads to you getting scored on. And this is again, another one of those, those times you should have been up for this ball. In which case the ball already would have been cleared to your corner and safe and you guys would be on the counter attack but because you didn't go up for that ball now you're sort of out of position the ball gets hit right into an awkward position for you and you have to do some weird half flip and try to chase down the ball good try on the patience i like the attempt at being patient here and taking the controlled play could have been executed a little bit better i think i personally would have taken one more touch on this ball at this point and gotten it to bounce right oops i pressed the wrong button apparently that button uh shift on your keyboard is play <laughs> but yeah if you take a touch right here get this ball to bounce like you're starting to bounce dribble just get a nice little little bounce here that gives you options because at that point in time either thog comes up and tries to close the gap and challenge or he doesn't he turns away and at that point you take another bounce that's not quite the angle you, you take another bounce right in this let me delete his arrow 
So either Thog comes and challenge, challenges, at which point then you can try to cut the ball around him, or then you can fake and see if he blows past the ball, or he's somewhat last man, you just try to take a 50-50 that goes middle, and your teammates come and clear, uh, clean up the goal. Any of those are good options. Or he doesn't challenge, he turns defensively to shadow defend because he's not confident in the challenge. And then you get to take another bounce dribble. You get to continue your bounce dribble, get a little closer to the net. And man, if you watch somebody like Ocalid play or you have just you just know how deadly bounce dribbles are, if Thog's shadow defending you at this point in time, you've got the ball here on a bounce dribble and you just rip a shot at net, that's a goal 90% of the time. So it seems like you're you're just letting the ball roll, trying to collect the boost and then make a play. But ideally, if you took a if you took a touch here, got it bouncing. Again, he has to decide: Am I going to challenge? If he challenges, you've got I pointed out three ways to outplay him. You cut it past him, you fake him, or you just take a 50-50 that goes middle for your teammates. If he turns defensively, beautiful. You take another. You keep continuing the bounce dribble and you rip a shot on net. Yeah, for champ one, this was a champ one game. I don't know. You might have, um, let me see. Does it show your MMR? It doesn't. I'm pretty sure this is a champ one replay analysis. And you look damn good mechanically for champ one. I will say that. If this replay analysis is still champ one, there was, I believe it is. I believe it is. Let me go back. We had both people in the same spot here. What happened? That was an attempt at an up at an upfield pass, which is the right idea. Let me go back one more time. Right, this ball comes back. Debbie Bohr should continue driving upfield, and you should be passing up in front of him. But neither of those things really happen because you missed you missed touch the ball, and Debbie Bohr turns back defensively, so that play didn't really come to fruition. then W Boar turns back on the ball. I would say this is definitely your ball because W Boar already turned off. He should have rotated the third man at this at this point because he already turned. He was first man, right? He was up here, didn't get the pass, rotated back, started rotating back, but then he, you know, turned back to try and chase the ball. So that was a that was a bad rotation by W Boar. And this is your ball. W Boar should be rotating to third man position here. Again, trying to get the solo plays, trying to cut it past them, just slightly mis-executing, not getting far enough off to the side of the ball and in order to actually cut the ball, you just sort of hit it straight forward. Unfortunate. Right ideas, slightly mis-executing them. Hey, you gotta be a little cautious. You're a little bit more aware of what is about to happen, right? You gotta be able to sort of understand what's about to happen. Because you're going, like, you're driving up to this ball like you're gonna catch it, but notice your teammate's positioning. He's about to, whether you decide to catch this or not, he's like, he's landing on this ball either way. So, Maybe at that point you decide, okay, I can't catch this because my teammate's going to land on the ball. So I'm just not even going to try. I'm going to turn back, leave it, let him pinch it, let it, try, let him try to follow it up, give up on the play. Sometimes there's just not a play. Sometimes your teammates just shut down your play accidentally. So you can make that decision here. Like, okay, I'm not going to be able to catch this because my teammate's landing on the ball. He can't really help it. So I'm going to give up on it. Or you make the decision. Okay, I want this ball. I believe this is my ball. So at this point in time, boom, I'm going to jump up for it here. I'm going to poke it going forward, poke it off of this. You know, it's going to come down about like maybe right here. 
and it's hard to draw this angle. Let me try to show it in fly perspective so it makes more sense. But you know, at this point in time, you're like, okay, I can't catch this. So instead I'm gonna jump up, poke it forward and then follow it up as it bounces off the wall. So those were your two options there. It was just kind of came down to, you needed to realize that your teammate's gonna land on this ball. So the catch is not really the option there. Okay, and at this point, that was fine what you did here, driving up to get a bump on this player, try to dispossess him. But at this point, again, you're not, it seems like you're not paying attention to your teammates, to, uh, to everything else that's going on. It kind of seems like you've been tunnel visioning on the ball a lot this game. Got to be able to see everything else on the field at once. This, and I'm not circling him because his positioning matters here, but your teammate does matter here. So you gotta be able to see that after you've interfered with him, you've gotten him to make an ineffective play, he's given up possession, your teammate's pushing for this ball, your teammate's boosting, He's there's no play here that makes sense for your teammate to just stop and sit on the backboard here. Your teammate's going to push into the corner for this ball, so you need to stay behind him, don't jump into the corner with him. He's going to go here, so you do not also wanna jump forward and go there. Instead, you wanna go down to the net, and be behind your teammate and then look again you've got perfect defensive positioning you're down in the net your teammate can come backboard if he analyzes the rest of the field and thinks that makes sense that's going to be you know sort of his call probably is the right play to go backboard since you'll already be down in net covering the net but the point is you should have seen your teammate was pushing into the corner here it made sense for him to push into the corner here so you don't also want to be jumping into the corner here really makes no sense for you to be diving into the corner trying to chase this ball. Ah, <laughs> just so, so many just slight mechanical mess ups, man. It's just, oh. I know the idea is there and this happens a lot like it's this is one of those skills that you should definitely work on mastering is trying to minimize the amount of times that this mistake happens where you try to catch the ball try to roll the ball but you accidentally just barely miss time the touch and it makes the ball bounce happens it's happened a lot to me in the past i've gotten a lot better at minimizing that mistake it happens to everybody that's one of those little those little mechanical mistakes that everybody miss, everybody makes, everybody goes through that period of time where they need to fix that mistake. And that's one of those fundamental recurring mistakes that you, once you fix that, it'll increase, it'll improve your gameplay a lot. So work on being able to catch the ball, make it roll how you want to, and not making it accidentally bounce like that. Okay. And again, make sure you're rotating behind your teammates, not rotating into the play, because you know this play is going in this direction and you're putting yourself into the play, you're rotating into the play to try to get the boost. But what's wrong with that is your teammates making the clear and he's gonna have all of his momentum going in this direction and he's going to be the next one on the ball. So you want to leave this corner boost because he probably needs this boost. He might not. He might have got this boost. However, we want our person who's making the next touch on the ball, who's making the next play on the ball to be in the best position to be able to do something with it, right? You want W. Boar to have the boost if he needs it to make this play and he's going in this direction. It just makes sense to leave this boost for him. You rotate back on pads. Maybe you take a path, something like... I don't know, maybe your first flip could have been a little bit better. I don't remember exactly. Let's go back, see your first flip here. If you could have flipped more to the right to take more of a circular rotation, picked up more pads. So yeah, at this point in time, it was hard to tell exactly what was gonna happen. So I don't fault that first flip too much. 
the execution on that flip could have been a little cleaner. It was a little messed up and it, there's no reason for it to be so much in this direction. So just a very small mistake, but you pick up one pad with your first flip. You should have been able to pick up this pad with your second flip had you flipped just slightly better. And then you either rotate back into the net and sort of position this way. Or if you want to pick up a couple more pads, because you do have plenty of time in this situation, you can swing out that way and then follow up the play this way if you need to. Hope that makes sense. But the bottom line is you don't want to rotate in for this boost because your teammates coming in this direction, one, you're both about to be now in the same position. If this opponent over in this direction, in this area, comes and challenges and beats your teammate on the 50, then look at that. This entire net is free because nobody's back because you rotated into the play and you put both of you guys in the same position. Or your teammate might be back, but now he's in a 1v2, 1v3 situation, right? He wins this 50-50, ball comes in front of the net, your teammate's all alone in the net. This guy also drives through, bumps him, free goal. So this all comes back to the fact that you're trying to get this boost when it makes more sense to let W. Bohr continue pushing this direction, grab the boost, and make a play out of the corner. You survive on pads, stick to the fundamental rotations. I say it all the time. There's a reason it's a fundamental rotation. There's a reason you don't rotate into the play. You always rotate away from the ball. It just works, man. It's black magic, it's voodoo magic, but rotating away from the ball, rotating away from the play, rotating around your teammates, it just always works. Just always, always works. Good attempt. Slightly difficult here. You go for the backflip, which is fine at this rank, especially your champ one. But again, you have looked really good for champ one. So I am going to point this out. Going for the black backflip here is fine, especially if we got the touch. It would have been great because you do disrupt the play here. You slow them down. You give your teammates more time. But if you have the ability, you actually do have the space here to sort of turn really quickly and meet this ball as it hits the, the curve and dribble it up the wall and start a solo play off of their, their side wall. That is a possibility here. Much harder, but you do look good. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say you could have caught that and brought it up the wall. back here okay nice got the goal finally got the goal this is exactly one of those situations I was talking about earlier where uh, ideally you always not always sometimes you will communicate he's gonna say all right i'm gonna force it back to the right in which case grabbing the boost and turning up field all right it makes sense <clears throat> but if you're not communicating that and you just want to go for a standard kickoff without communicating any sort of kickoff strategy you would want to grab this boost and turn defensively and like i said there may be a play exactly like this where because you turn defensively and covered the more threatening option, which is always good, right? I would rather turn defensively and give myself the opportunity to not get scored on than to have a quicker play on this ball coming in this direction. There's a chance where if you turn defensively here, you still notice you can get to this ball first. You might be more heavily contested than you would have if you turned immediately offensive 
or you may not be able to get to the ball first, in which case you have to defend this play coming forward. But again, I would rather not concede a kickoff goal, not concede a dead ball kickoff goal, than get to this ball faster. So that's is exactly what I was pointing out at the very beginning of the analysis here. So yes, turning offensively here was awesome because you get to this ball first, you can make a, a solo play off the sidewall or make a play off the sidewall. But the highest percentage play is going to be to turn defensively. And then if a ball like this does come, you can come and challenge. If you can get to the ball to challenge, then you go. If you can't, then you turn and you defend and you know the play develops from there. Make sure you're picking up your pads and your rotation. All right. Look at this. Don't flip here. This boost is not up. This is a replay bug. Don't flip here. Drive up to this pad and then flip back in this direction, taking this curved, the circular path of pads, right? You should have picked up that pad off to your right, then flipped towards this boost pad here. Right, pick up this pad, then you can flip. You don't even have to flip, but then you can flip. You can maybe circle back in this direction, have your ball cam on, so you'd be seeing, after you pick up this pad, you're seeing the play. And at half speed, you realize, okay, the play's all the way in my opponent's corner. I'm probably not going to go all the way back for my big boost because that puts me the entire field's length away from the play. That's just bad spacing. It's just unoptimal spacing. The ball's all the way in your opponent's corner. You shouldn't be all the way back in your corner giving up the entire midfield here, right? You're giving up this entire space of the field if something, you know, a 50-50 or he just punts the ball in this area. You're not there to contest it. So if instead you would have picked up maybe this pad and this pad and then turned up field, you'd be in a much better position to deal with anything that happens. Ball, if the if the worst case scenario happens while you're in this position, the ball flies overhead somehow, all you got to do is then turn and then you deal with the play that way. So going back all the way for the boost, all you do by doing that is you're giving up Look at this entire distance of the field is completely uncontested for anything your opponent does. Yeah, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to look I'm going to have to message you on Discord and ask you if you remember if this replay was champ 1 or if this because you submitted two analysis. I don't remember if that's because you asked me if you could update it because it had been so long since you had submitted it or what. But there was two analysis. I'm doing the more recent one. But they were both in the same message. So I don't know if it you edited it and inserted that replay at a later date. Or if the, you just submitted two at once. <clears throat> but if this is really champ one. You look like you have the mechanics of easily probably a champ three. Let's go back here one more time. All right, that's fine. Nice. <laughs> Really, really amazing recovery there. There you go. That was great. No reason for you to really be driving on the back wall here, okay? Be careful about that. I don't know if you're trying to set up for like some clip, trying to hit a highlight play. I'm going to go backboard and try to be nutty but there's really no play here for you to be driving onto their backboard so 
you know, cut out the little, the little nonsense plays if you want to be as competitive as possible. <clears throat> And be careful about this boost grab here. This, you gotta realize this angle, you're kind of, by grabbing this boost, you're kind of crossing yourself up on defense here. Ideally here, you you need to be turning and shadow defense. You either need to be turning and challenging, which is probably not the play, because if you get outplayed, both your teammates are in front of you, it's an open net. So really your goal here needs to be to buy time. <clears throat> so you need to be turning and shadow defending. And by taking this little extra time and space to go grab that corner boost, you're giving them a pretty large window. If you're over here grabbing this boost, you're giving them a pretty large amount of space to just get that ball past you and shoot it on the net. Right? If, if this guy is just a little bit quicker, I feel as though you're leaving the net completely open to get scored on. And again, you're not doing a great job picking up your pads on your rotation. So pads have been a pretty substantial concern this game. So, you know, as good as your mechanics have looked, a couple of fundamental mistakes like rotating away from the play, not rotating into the play, and picking up pads, kind of plaguing you a little bit. Right here, you could be driving up the entire midline of the field, picking up all the pads up the middle of the field maybe could have had just 12 more boosts there was really only maybe one more pad that you could have got that you missed but then you'd have 55 boosts and you might not feel that pressure that need to have to go for the corner here putting yourself in a bad position to defend honestly oh that should have been a goal this here should have been a goal. Bam. Right here. Your your goal here is to push, to be ready for the shot here, right? <clears throat> you are covering... You need to be covering the possibility that this ball gets past Thog and it's just a free goal. That should be your mindset here. You don't care if Thog actually is able to make contact with this and gets the ball somewhere in this area that's not your goal because your teammates behind you in this area he can cover that option you need to be covering the option that this is just a free goal this should have been a you should have been putting this into the net 100 percent. your teammate is behind you again in this area he can't cover this option but he can cover any other option your mindset here should have been if this gets past Thog, it's a freebie. We get a free goal. Thank you very much. <clears throat> but unfortunately, choosing to cover the wrong option here. And you miss you miss an open net. <coughs> and then also here, right before you make a play on this ball, I want to see you steal this boost. Steal your, your opponent's boost if you have the uh, opportunity, which you do. Come get over to this ball real, or this boost real quick. Grab the boost and then make a play out of their corner right here. But instead, you, you don't do that and you leave them that boost and you don't you don't really make a play on the ball either. So just miss the boost grab opportunity and I believe being in that position where you grab the boost would have been a better position to make a play on the ball than than what you did as well because if you grab this boost you're in the perfect position to meet this ball as it's done bouncing as it's done bouncing right it's the last bounce is going to be about here and then it can roll up the wall and you're in the perfect position to follow it up yes you end up getting their boost anyways right but that doesn't mean that in this in this time frame one of their 
teammates could have grabbed that boost and then had 100 boosts that they wouldn't have had otherwise. So yes, you still managed to get the boost, but arguably you shouldn't have been going for this boost. I mean, it's fine. It really is. But, you know, in some scenarios, you might not have the time to go for this boost, right? If this 50-50 is coming out or something like that and he gets absolutely dunked and it's rushing back to your end or something like that, you might not have the time to go for that boost. And in which case, stealing it earlier would have been better. And again, in all the time leading up to this point in time, one of their teammates could have grabbed this boost. Sunday Shark maybe doesn't try to go for this ball. He goes for the boost instead. All those different uh, scenarios could have came true, in which case you didn't steal the opponent's boost. <clears throat> Okay. Let's see this. It's not terrible, right? I'm okay with you not going up for this ball because Sunday Shark is beating you. He's up before you. Your assumption is that he would have beat you. So that's fine. But then the, the only issue I have with this is it's I'm going to ignore it. It's really not bad because you're positioning for it kind of looks like he's going to get a very soft sort of glancing touch down in this direction, which is what I believe you're positioning for. The only thing that kind of sucks here is if he doesn't hit the ball as he doesn't. You're not in position to be able to go for it, which ideally hindsight is 2020 here in your position. I may have made the same play. I'm not going to lie, but ideally here, a rule of thumb, this is, this is hard. I, I, again, I think there's a very high percent chance that I make the same play as you that I make the same decision. I position the same as you here. And that's somewhat of a mistake for me as well, because you will hear pros say that the first man that's challenging right in this position, ignore this player on your team because he's out of the play. He's essentially third man and you're essentially first man and your teammate behind you is we'll just say second man because that's what he is. The first player, the first man should not get faked. The first man cannot get faked. So in this position, you should be playing for him to miss this ball because you didn't go up and challenge. You need to play the option where he misses the ball, right? Because from his point of view, he could be calling, I'm faking, I'm faking. And then Thog is ready to go for that ball as soon as he leaves it, right? And then you're completely outplayed. But if you play the fact that he could be missing this, then even if he calls that he's faking, you're there for the challenge. You meet Thog as he also goes for that fake. Right, because worst case scenario is he does get this, this glancing touch that you were trying to predict. But again, your teammates behind you, he can go challenge that. That's fine. The thing that matters is that you didn't get faked. Because then you can just drive behind your teammate and you're behind him and it's all good and dandy. So this is really a very, very high level um tip or point that i'm pointing out here i hope it makes sense but as the first man you should always be playing the ball if that's like the best way to simplify this you should never the worst thing you can do as first man is get faked because you've essentially taken yourself out of the play without adding any sort of value and then you're leaving the person behind you to deal with a much harder situation because now they don't have backup and everything is on them and this same principle at a higher level at gc where you'll see this come into play a lot is when somebody hits the ball to the sidewall and they have the potential to go for the double tap off of the sidewall and hit it towards middle or hit it towards the corner right that's a play if for all my gcs you know that play very well you're very familiar with that play where somebody maybe clears the ball off the backboard or aerials up for the ball to the sidewall and then there's the potential that they double it off of the sidewall 
as the first man there, you want to play if you're not last back. If you're last back, then you have to respect the double tap. But if you're not last back, you want to play the option where they don't make contact with the ball on the double tap because at worst, the ball gets past you and your teammates behind you to deal with it. But at best, you've read the whiff, you've read the fake, and then you're up to challenge. So I hope that makes sense. That's a very high level tip. But to generalize it, to make it easy to understand, as first man, if you've got somebody behind you, your goal should be to play the ball and to not get faked. Ah, open net miss from your teammate. Was that open for you as well, though, if you would have just shot? That is that is just open for you as well. So, I mean, probably hard to tell in that play where you're having to do so much so quickly, right? You're recovering, you're wave dashing, you see your teammates in the midfield. But a lot of, you know, getting better at the game, getting higher ranked is improving that awareness, which we've seen multiple times now in this game. Your awareness has been a little... Um, a little lackluster sometimes so you maybe you need to be more conscious more aware of the entire field as you're playing you could have just shot this it's fine that you went for the pass but this was just an open net for you ah uh. This was submitted three months ago. You've had a lot of time to uh, watch my replay analysis. What's wrong with this play, everybody? This was something that I wanted to do with this analysis that I didn't do very well. I forgot to do this. I wanted to start asking you guys what's wrong with the play versus just outright explaining it. So right here, before this goes any further, what was wrong with this play? What's wrong with that play? Now that I've played it through even more, there's actually two things wrong with that play. One we've already pointed out with this analysis, during this analysis, is that somebody, either you or him, need to be cheating up. In 3v3, somebody should be cheating up for the ball, supporting the person who goes for the kickoff, either challenging the ball on a dead ball kickoff or chasing down the ball as it goes to either mid boost whatever whatever you know this cheating person has to do to adapt to the play afterwards but somebody needs to be cheating in 3v3 most of the time <clears throat> unless you're specifically going for a certain kickoff strategy where you don't want to send somebody to cheat but the second issue if you've seen my replay analysis you know what i'm about to say you always want to be grabbing the boost behind the person doing the kickoff so i guess in this in this kickoff it doesn't really apply because your teammate went for one this boost, you went for the other boost. But say that W Boar went up to cheat, or you went up to cheat, the boost that should be taken between the two corners is this boost behind your teammate doing the kickoff. Reason being, for those of you who haven't heard this tip from me before, is as this person goes up for the kickoff. <clears throat> The fact that they're putting all of their momentum and speed in this direction means that more often than not, after the kickoff, they're going to land on this side of the field. And their next play is going to be to try to grab this mid boost. But if they get beat to that mid boost, their next play is going to be to rotate back to this boost a lot of the time. Not all the time. Sometimes they might make the decision to grab pads and stay upfield, which is a good decision sometimes. But if not, they're going to be going back to that corner boost. In which case, by you going and stealing that boost, they're now boost starved if they get beat to this mid boost. But if the only boost that is taken is the one that's behind them, because they're almost never going to need to rotate back to that boost. Again, he rotates through in this direction, and then that boost is there for him. He has 100. All is fine and dandy. You're not boost starving your teammate that way. All right, we're tied one apiece, one apiece with a minute left. There's a pretty good opportunity for you. 
unfortunate you're messing up your touch here just slightly jumped off to the left of the ball what you need to do here it's a slight mistake but if you can get off to the right of this ball there's no reason that you need to be jumping really so straight at the ball to begin with take a wider angle it's going to make it easier to read and it gives you the option to try to just shoot it on target immediately put pressure on the defense and this guy might not even get back if you shoot this on target i think this is a goal honestly so sort of a missed opportunity to just score off of the kickoff But that sharp angle that you take on the ball here just opens up the possibility that like you do, you accidentally mess up. You jump slightly. You jump just ever so slightly. Look at that. See that? When you initiate your jump, you're off to the left side of the ball accidentally. But if you would have taken that wider approach, this, this possibility of making this mistake is pretty much nullified. Oh, close. Good bump. This is fine. Not going to nitpick that rotation. It wasn't anything too bad with it in the moment there. Teammate should not be pre-jumping. Right, he's assuming, okay, the ball's on the backboard. He's coming from this direction. Clearly, he's going to clear it in this direction, right? Wrong, because, I mean, at the at as you get better, people's options open up. He can always bring this ball and send it up in the midfield direction. And by pre-jumping, I mean, you've just wasted a little bit of boost. You've slowed down. He's slowed down your decision-making because you're like, okay, my teammate's up. He's pre-jumping. I should probably be a little bit careful here. But if you don't have that hesitation of your teammate pre-jumping, then maybe you would have been challenging right now, knowing that you have backup because your teammate wasn't pre-jumping. He's not out of position from that pre-jump. And you can be aggressive on this ball and possibly score. So unfortunate. Really don't want to pre-jump too often. It's not a very high percentage play a lot of the time. <clears throat> Going to overtime. Sweet, sweet. This is a long analysis. Beautiful. If you've made it to this point in the analysis, I want you to comment down below. If you've made it to this part of the analysis, I want you to comment down below telling me you've made it to this part of the analysis, that you've made it this far, because that's pretty damn cool. And I appreciate you for sticking around this long into the analysis, or maybe you came back at a later date and watched the rest of the analysis. Either way, I appreciate it. And if you made it this far into the video and you haven't left a like yet, I think you need to do that. If you've made it this far, you've probably liked the video. So make sure you leave that like and subscribe if you haven't already. Oh, close on the shot. Good try. Oh, nice. Good finish by your teammate. Cool. So overall, I mean, you mechanically look really sound. Your car control looks really great. <clears throat> which is great to see. You look like you have the car control to be a champ three. You have champ three level car control, I should say. I don't think necessarily that that means you deserve champ three just based off of your car control, but I think you do have the car control of a champ three. Now your, your ball control and your aerial ball control and your ground ball control, you know, when you incorporate the ball, you struggled a little bit. So you, that might be something you need to work on mechanically is you look good 
on your own, which is great. That's a skill in and of itself. But now you need to start practicing things where you're actually incorporating the ball into the play. You need to incor you need to practice your dribbling. You need to practice your flicks. You need to practice your catches. You need to practice your cuts on the ball. You need to practice your aerial mechanics with the ball, right? You jumped off the wall and messed up your ability or to make a play off of the wall. So start incorporating mechanical training that includes the ball as well. You know, no more, you still need to do your rings training, but maybe start adding in obstacle courses. I don't really like obstacle course work shot maps. Honestly, I take that back, but start practicing on free play flicks and all those other things I pointed out. Do air dribble gauntlet. Air dribble gauntlet is one of my favorite aerial ball control workshop maps. Very, very difficult, but very, very, very rewarding in terms of how much it helps you improve. Like I don't, I don't do that workshop map past like level five, literally. <clears throat> if I get to level five within like a 30 minute time frame of practicing that <laughs> workshop map, that's a W for me. I'm happy with that. I literally like have never even seen the levels past level five. And I'm consistently every season GC2 uh, sometimes touch GC3 and I don't get past level five, but those first five levels are enough to drastically help you improve your aerial ball control. I promise you that air dribble gauntlet is the name of that workshop map. Check it out. Love that map for improving. Also custom training packs that, you know, work on aerial mechanics, flip resets off the sidewall, air dribbles, double taps, any of those, all of them are definitely going to be helpful but you look like you just need to practice your mechanics with the ball. Secondly, a lot of the time you needed to make sure you stick to the fundamental rotations, rotate away from the ball. If the ball's heading into the corner where the, where the boost is. I know you want that boost, but if your teammates on the ball and they're going into the corner, they're going towards that boost that you want. Don't throw yourself in that corner as well for the boost, rotate away from the ball, rotate away from the play. Stick to those fundamental rotations and you will make a lot less mistakes in your gameplay. And then third, I think the third biggest thing was picking up your pads, which around champ one is something that is always a recurring issue. A lot of the time is picking up your pads. Same with rotating away from the play. <clears throat> it was very interesting to see that those two fundamental mistakes were still prevalent for you at champ one because like I've said multiple times throughout this analysis, you mechanically look better than a champ one. I'm watching this and I'm questioning whether this replay analysis was actually a champ one replay analysis, or if you submitted a new analysis when you ranked up or something like that. And I, I forgot, like that's how good you look mechanically. I'm thinking this is like a champ three replay analysis, but you're still making the fundamental mistakes. So while you are good mechanically, that doesn't mean that you're the best player on the field, right? You still are making mistakes that are hindering your own plays and hindering your team's plays. So rotate away from the ball and pick up your pads as you're moving around the field more. And I, I mean, I don't remember exactly what else I pointed out because my recording is now an hour and two minutes long. I'm sure after splicing out a little bit of, of spots, especially I've got a tickle in my throat right now. I keep coughing. <clears throat> I'm sure after cutting out all these little bits, it might be just under an hour long. So I don't remember everything I pointed out. Actually, I'll, I'll say it right now and I'll put it at the beginning of the video. This is a, re a long replay analysis. So as I'm pointing out stuff so that you don't have to go back and watch it again. I mean, you can if you want to. It's fine with me. It's a second view. Thank you very much. But just pointing it out ahead of time. Take notes. Write down the stuff that I'm saying so you don't have to go and scrub back through uh, an hour long video and pick up all those tips that I gave you. But that's going to be it, guys. If you want to get an analysis done for yourself, check out the link or check out the description down below and join my Discord. That's where you'll be submitting your replay analysis. Read all the details. It's all in the description. Leave a like on the video again. If you made it to the very end, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.